Hello and welcome to Unacademy IAS English, a one-stop destination for the English medium civil services aspirants. Brazil has just announced that it is not going to join the Belt and Road Initiative of China. So this is indeed a big announcement coming out from Brazil. And in this session, let's understand the significance of this development. Brazil's announcement comes at a very crucial time because China's President Xi Jinping was all set to visit Brazil next month for the G20 summit as Brazil holds the, the current chair of the G20. And Xi Jinping was looking forward to this visit as he was hoping to convince the Brazilian President Lula da Silva to ensure that Brazil joins the ambitious Belt and Road project which would establish China's dominant presence across the Latin America region. So now that Brazil has decided to not join the Belt and Road Initiative, it has quite possibly shaken China. So this decision of Brazil has led several analysts, journalists and even few educators to label this as Brazil's snub of China. They have compared it with India's decision to quit Belt and Road Initiative. And they have said that Brazil has followed India to quit the BRI project of China and they are labeling this as a big setback for China. But this is where I would strongly disagree because this is a very short-sighted view of the development. If you look at why Brazil has actually decided to not join Belt and Road Initiative, you will understand that this is neither Brazil following India's footsteps nor a snub by Brazil to China. So what is the actual truth or the answer behind Brazil's decision? That is what we need to understand. So before we get into the reasons behind Brazil's decision, for beginners, let me introduce the Belt and Road project so that you have a, a fair bit of background. And let's also discuss why India had quit Belt and Road Initiative in the first place. And then we can easily understand the reasons for Brazil to not join the Belt and Road Initiative. See, Belt and Road Initiative, or also known as One Belt, One Road Project, is an ambitious connectivity project that has been pushed by China's President Xi Jinping since 2013. As China emerged as a major global power, China set its sight on global domination to link the Chinese market with all the key global markets. And for that, China required good connectivity, that is transportation connectivity. So it proposed the Belt and Road project, and this consists of two major components. If you look at the map over here, you will notice the Silk Road Economic Belt, which is the land-based component of Belt and Road Initiative. Through the Silk Road Economic Belt, China plans to connect with South Asian, Southeast Asian and even West Asian and European and Central Asian countries through a set of land corridors, through road and rail transport and as well as through pipelines. China has been expanding its connectivity into Central Asia, which is rich with resources. This would allow China to access the rich resources of Central Asia. It has expanded the project towards South Asian countries, that is India's neighbors as well, towards Southeast Asian countries, and as well as towards West Asia and Europe, particularly East and Central Europe. So China has already built strategic roads and railway lines and oil and gas pipelines, expanding its reach and influence. This allows China to tap the resources of other countries, the raw materials, to power its own manufacturing growth and also boost its exports by finding new markets. So under this strategy, China has promised massive investments, billions of dollars worth of investments to all these countries. So on the other hand, there is a maritime component, the 21st century maritime Silk Road Initiative. So this focuses on sea-based connectivity, maritime connectivity. So China has focused on strategic ports across Asia, Africa and Europe. And it has invested in these strategic ports to establish maritime connectivity. For example, China has funded the Colombo and Hambantota ports in Sri Lanka as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. China has taken up several strategic port projects in East Africa, 
from Mozambique to Tanzania, Kenya, Djibouti. It is working with European countries and even West Asian countries like UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and others and as well as with Iran to build strategic ports and establish a deep-rooted maritime link. So this ambitious infrastructure project of China funded by China is the Belt and Road Initiative. Now if you look at South Asia and India's neighbors, almost all the neighbors of India except for Bhutan have joined the Belt and Road Initiative. Pakistan is part of the CPEC corridor, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is a vital link of the Belt and Road Initiative. China has even developed the strategic Gwadar port in Balochistan province of Pakistan and it is establishing the CPEC corridor to bring China in close connect with Pakistan and the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. Similarly, Myanmar. Myanmar also is part of Belt and Road Initiative and China-Myanmar Economic Corridor has already been established and it has been functional which links China directly with Bay of Bengal with strategic ports like the Kyokfu port in the Rakhine state of Myanmar. Then Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and even Maldives, all these neighboring countries have joined the Belt and Road Initiative. In Nepal as well, China is expanding its rail and road connectivity. With Bangladesh, China has invested at the Chittagong port and in several other projects, including energy projects, road and uh, connectivity projects. So thus, China has significantly expanded its economic influence and as well as its diplomatic and military influence. There are concerns that China might turn some of these strategic ports and projects into a possible military base or use them for a dual purpose, thus projecting its military influence and establishing its geopolitical diplomatic dominance. Now, India has decided to quit Belt and Road Initiative. Initially, when China came up with the plan in 2013, China wanted India also to be part of Belt and Road Initiative because China knew how big the Indian market is. India also initially was slightly interested given the opportunities that would be available through such a mega global project. But there was a reason why India quit the Belt and Road Initiative. When China-Pakistan announced the route, the alignment of CPEC corridor, it took India by shock. India was completely taken by surprise when the CPEC route alignment was made public. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which connects the Xinjiang province of China from the city of Kashgar to Gwadar and Karachi in Balochistan, it passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. It passes through Gilgit, Baltistan and even Shaksgam Valley. Shaksgam Valley is Indian territory, including Gilgit, Baltistan. These are areas that Pakistan has illegally occupied from, from India. And in 1963, Pakistan even ceded Shaksgam Valley to China through a bilateral boundary agreement. After the India-China war, in 1963, China-Pakistan signed their boundary agreement. And Pakistan gave away Shaksgam Valley, which was Indian territory, which should have been part of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. It was leased away to China. And since then, China has maintained troops and built infrastructure at Shaksgam Valley. So this is a direct threat to India's sovereignty. If India were to accept the CPEC project and Belt and Road Initiative, it's as good as giving up the claims on Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. So since the route of the project passes through POK, through Indian territory, which is illegally occupied by Pakistan, including Shaksgam Valley, which has been gifted away to China, India correctly rejected the project. And since then, we have boycotted the Belt and Road Initiative. So this is what leads some experts and even some educators to conclude that Brazil might be following India's footsteps, that Brazil has snubbed China. But let me tell you why these two are entirely different. If you understand the reasons behind Brazil's decision, you will see the stark contrast behind uh, India's decision and Brazil's uh, decision. Brazil's decision to not join Belt and Road Initiative does not mean that Brazil is snubbing China. In fact, Brazil is very close to China with regard to economic relations. Brazil in a way depends on China as well and it is very eager to attract Chinese investments to fund its infrastructure projects. So then the question is, why did Brazil refuse to join Belt and Road Initiative. So let's identify these reasons quickly. There are three specific reasons 
why Brazil has decided not to join Belt and Road Initiative. And again, I'm reiterating the point. This is not a snub to China. It doesn't mean that Brazil is against China. Rather, Brazil is taking a balanced position. Brazil doesn't want any binding commitments with a big power like China. Brazil wants to maintain a flexible economic relationship. See, in Latin America, Brazil, as you know, is the most significant power. It's a large country, blessed with resources, a major economy. And in the Latin America region, almost 22 countries have already joined China's Belt and Road Initiative. So Brazil knew that if it were to join Belt and Road Initiative, it can benefit. But however, Brazil had its own concerns driven by its own self-interest. Brazil doesn't want any binding commitment, any agreement-based commitment with China, given that China is a dominant economy. At the same time, Brazil wants to maintain the friendly relations and attract Chinese investments, but on its own terms. It doesn't want any kind of obligation with a major power like China. So this could also be a balancing act of Brazil because Brazil doesn't want to upset United States, which has openly opposed the Belt and Road Initiative. Brazil has very close ties with United States. And United States, as you know, has been trying to counter Chinese influence in Central America and also in Latin America. So if Brazil were to join Belt and Road Initiative through an agreement-based binding commitment, US would have been instigated, which would have affected US-Brazil relations as well. So this could be a balancing act of Brazil to maintain a distance between US and China, to not get caught between the great power rivalry between these two global powers. And it allows Brazil to maintain flexibility in its economic ties and maintain the friendly relations and continue to attract investments for infrastructure projects on its own terms without becoming too dependent on China or without getting bound by a treaty-based agreement. And there are few other reasons as well. Just like India, Brazil also follows an independent foreign policy. So Brazil has looked at its own self-interest, realistic, pragmatic interests. Brazil has learned that through the Belt and Road Initiative, Many countries have become dependent on China because Belt and Road projects create a flood gate through which cheap Chinese products might flood the market, which could create an import dependency. So a big power like Brazil would not like to have such dependency on a country like China. So this is a pure economic pragmatic uh, interest on which Brazil has taken the decision. Brazil doesn't want that kind of dependency on any country. It wants to have a good relationship with China while maintaining its independence, while retaining its independent foreign policy. It is a balancing act as well. It doesn't want to get caught between US and China. And at the same time, it wants to attract Chinese funding for selected infrastructure projects. Brazil wants to choose the projects which will be funded by China, not the other way around. Because Brazil, of course, has seen how China's Belt and Road projects have worked in other countries. In many countries, there have been concerns about debt trap diplomacy, where China has been accused of deliberately pushing small countries into a debt trap and forcing them to give away key projects, which China later uses for strategic purposes. Take, for example, the Hambantota port of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka fell into a debt trap. It couldn't repay the loans. Eventually, Chinese company has got a 99-year lease over the strategic Hambantota port. So Brazil wants to preserve its own economic self-interest. Brazil is also aware that China is scouting for raw materials. Brazil is a country blessed with enormous natural resources. And Brazil doesn't want to be just a supplier of raw materials and an importer of Chinese goods. So that would be like a new age colonialism. And Brazil is smart enough, powerful enough to understand that. And it wants to protect its autonomy and independence. And it wants to maintain a subtle distance between US and China, not get into that power competition between the two global powers, while protecting its own economy and its own strategic interests. Brazil wants to ensure that its resources are used to power the Brazilian economy, not the Chinese economy. 
and it wants to have friendly ties to bring investments from China for selected infrastructure projects. Because China might have different intentions, including strategic motives. And Brazil is purely driven by its own economic priorities. Brazil is looking to re-industrialize the nation. And it needs Chinese funds and investments for some key infrastructure projects. But it doesn't want to take any commitments through the Belt and Road project. So that is why it has stayed out of Belt and Road Initiative. It has not rejected or quit the Belt and Road Initiative. It has decided carefully to not join the initiative while maintaining friendly relations with China and continuing to attract investments from China. So you can't really compare Brazil's decision with India's decision. That would be completely incorrect. Also, there are environmental and social concerns that have come up because Brazil's president, Lula da Silva, who belongs to the left uh, side of the political spectrum, has always given top priority for environmental issues and social issues. And China's Belt and Road projects, it has raised several environmental concerns and social concerns in many other countries. For example, in several African countries, Chinese projects under BRI are accused of leading to environmental destruction. Across Asia, Chinese BRI projects have been alleged to have led to displacement of large communities leading to social problems. So Brazil is aware that China's large projects might create social concerns, environmental concerns. And don't forget, Brazil is home to the Amazonian rainforest and the enormous Amazonian resources. Brazil knows that China would keep an eye on it. And hence, Brazil doesn't want any over-exploitation of the sensitive Amazonian ecosystem. In fact, Brazil is part of a regional agreement to protect the Amazon under Amazon Cooperation Treaty Association, the Latin American countries which are part of the Amazon River Basin, they are committed to protect the Amazonian forests. So there are environmental priorities, social priorities with economic self-interest and a pragmatic uh, geopolitical balance between US and China. These are the reasons why Brazil has chosen not to join Belt and Road Initiative. So I wouldn't look at this as a snub, as a rejection of the project. I wouldn't see this as a break in Brazil-China relations. Rather, Brazil is maintaining its independence while protecting its friendly relations with China. Brazil wants Chinese investments, but on its own terms. It wants to maintain that balance between US and China and protect its own economy, its own environment and its own society. So many experts who are critical of BRICS because the BRICS grouping consists of India, Brazil and China. Many critics of uh, BRICS, they point out that BRICS is doomed to fail, especially Western experts, right? Because see, Br BRICS has always been projected as an anti-West grouping, right? BRICS countries, which have a common interest to reform the global banking and financial system, they have countered the Western dominated World Bank and IMF, and they have tried to create parallel economic and financial institutions. BRICS has even set up a new development bank to rival the World Bank. They have set up a contingent reserve arrangement to counter the IMF. So BRICS countries clearly have a vision to end Western dominance in global banking and financial system. BRICS countries are also considering using their own currencies for cross-border payments to de-dollarize the global economy, to reduce their dependency on the US dollar. So critics of BRICS, right, who primarily look at BRICS as just an anti-West group, they have often said BRICS is going to fail because there are a lot of internal divisions. In a way, they are correct as well, especially because China, Russia are authoritarian countries, whereas India, Brazil, South Africa are liberal democracies. So fundamentally, ideologically, the members are opposed to each other, but still they manage to work. But some of the analysts, they don't see how these countries can work together. They believe that BRICS eventually will be a dud organization. They believe that BRICS will not achieve anything concrete because of the fundamental differences between the member states. And of course, the biggest division within BRICS is the India-China tensions, the constant border tensions between the two. This was very evident in the last four years especially. So India-China relations were affected because of the Ladakh clashes. But don't forget, at the recent Kazan summit of BRICS that was held just a few days ago in Russia, India-China used the BRICS platform to ensure that the Ladakh 
standoff was resolved. The last few pending uh, standoff points in Ladakh was resolved in the run up to the BRICS summit to pave the way for India and China to make the announcement at the BRICS summit in Kazan, which also shows that BRICS could be a possible platform for India-China cooperation to resolve their issues as well. So now experts, especially the Western experts are saying that Brussels decision to quit BRI will create a bigger divide in BRICS. They are predicting that China might now retaliate against Brazil because they are also looking at Brazil's decision as a snub to China. But again, I would beg to disagree here. Brazil, as I said, depends on China in a way. It needs Chinese funds. China also needs Brazil's resources. The only thing Brazil has done is that it wants to do this on its own terms. Joining a project like Belt and Road Initiative through a committed agreement will bind Brazil to Chinese uh, initiatives. So Brazil wants that freedom, that flexibility to attract Chinese investments, maintain the friendly ties with China while protecting its own economic interests and maintaining a balance with the US. So I don't see the decision of BRICS, uh, the decision of Brazil, sorry. I don't see the decision of Brazil affecting the grouping of BRICS, right? Because India, China did have divisions, but both have found a way out of the Ladakh standoff. And in fact, the BRICS platform played a role in enabling India, China to arrive at a conclusion of the Ladakh standoff. So similarly, I don't see the emergence of any major uh, divide between Brazil and China. And I don't see this affecting the BRICS grouping. In fact, BRICS has started to do very well in the last uh, one or two years after BRICS was expanded with the addition of new members. There are many more countries which are looking for membership into the BRICS grouping. And BRICS countries are taking forward some of their economic uh, initiatives to reform the global financial system. So I don't see China targeting Brazil for this decision because there is a big difference between the Indian decision to quit, uh, to quit BRI and the Brazilian decision to quit BRI. India's decision was primarily because of the threat to its own sovereignty. CPEC project didn't align with our territorial claims and that's the reason why India had to quit Belt and Road Initiative. But Brazil's decision is entirely different. Brazil is not breaking up with China. It's not ending its ties with China. It will maintain the close ties. It will attract investments from China on its own terms. As I said, it's trying to strike a balance between US and China, protect its own economic interests, protect its environment and address the social concerns while working with China closely. So what do you think about this topic? Do let me know in the comments. Do do let me know if you, have, if you have any other views, any other counter arguments. Please let me know that in the comments. So I hope the topic is clear. And if you have liked the session, do press the like button, share your comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That is it. Thanks for watching.